Derek Craig here with Magnus Broadheads. One of the questions we often get is about the durability of our broadheads, in particular our Black Hornet series and our Stinger series, and that includes the buzz cuts and the killer bees, whether it's serrated or non-serrated. And the reason we get this question a lot of time is because it's no secret. Our ferrules are made out of a 7075 T6 aluminum. Today, a lot of manufacturers will spout off that they make their uh, ferrules out of solid steel or out of tool steel, which tool steel is incredibly brittle. Never want a ferrule made out of that. But want to show durability on our broadheads. We've been making these broadheads, the stingers and stingers and buzz cuts in particular for nearly 20 years. Uh, the Black Hornet we came out with, I believe it was in 2015. So I want to show you. I have a steel lid off of a 55 gallon drum. A buddy of mine owns a truck accessory shop and so he does a lot of spraying bed liners. And this is a steel drum off of one of his bed liner uh, supply, like the resins that they come in. Here's some magnets. You can see it's steel. This is an industrial duty drum lid right here. In fact, I can't get the little magnets off. So anyways, so we're going to take a couple shots. I'm going to use my nothing fancy, my elite ritual bow. It's a 60 pound bow and it's 29 inch draw. There's nothing fancy about this bow. It's a bow that anybody could use. And again, it's only 60 pounds. Also going to take a couple shots with a crossbow. And this is nothing fancy. This is a, a Barnett Jackal. It happens to me, my daughter, she killed a lot of deer with this thing when she was little. Uh, this is a relatively inexpensive crossbow and not particularly fast by today's standards. Uh, so we're going to use this. Uh, nothing fancy in terms of arrows and bolts when it comes to arrows for the bow. This is just, I grabbed some gold tips. These are some gold tips I have. These are the old gold tip XT7595s, a very typical shaft that most hunters would go with. There is no heavy insert in this. That's a standard insert. 100 grain field tip on this one. Obviously, I'll put a broadhead on the others. Nothing fancy, just a standard knock, uh, feathers. Total weight on this thing, I actually have a scale right here. And total weight, just for reference, is 390 grains. In today's era of high FOC, super heavy arrows, this is not. This is just something that the average Joe Archer would go into a bow shop, pick up, and go out hunting. Nothing wrong with this Saro setup. It's killed a ton of deer. Don't know the FOC, don't care. But it's under 400 grains total weight on this setup right here. And for a crossbow bolt, we're going to use a gold tip 500 nitro, nitro. Again, something that anybody would go into your Cabela's, your Bass Pro, your Shields, whatever, and buy. There's nothing special about this standard inserts, standard knocks. Weight on this without a 100 grain head is 439. So with a 100 grain head on it, you're talking um, 539, 540 range on this right here. So we're gonna take a couple shots with these. We're gonna use, again, straight out of the package as you would buy them. We're gonna take a shot with, with each of these with a 100 grain Magnus Black Hornet and a 100 grain Magnus Stinger Broadhead. These are brand new, never been opened, out of the package right here, nothing fancy. See them, I don't know if it's in focus. But anyways, standard as you would order off the Magnus website or from Cabela's or your local bow shop or whatever. Nothing fancy. I got another camera that's gonna be set up over here that's gonna take some high speed footage from this side. I got a little action camera I'm gonna set up behind the steel drum target to get action footage from this side of it coming through. And behind it, I have just a broadhead target in case I get full pass through and into that target. I'm gonna try and avoid the plastic drum lids shooting this area right here. Again, virgin lid.
This is it. We're going to do a durability test, so sit tight. So the first shot is going to be with a 100 grain Magnus Black Hornet. Again, straight out of the package. I'm going to put one on one of these gold tips and shoot it on my bow. Again, these are straight out of the package as you would buy them. There's nothing, no funny business, no BS, just straight up broadhead. And again, just your nothing fancy gold tip. There's no blade alignment, there's no anything. It's just how it screws on, it screws on. Set that there for a second, grab my bow. Okay, knock the arrow. And we're about, oh, 10, 12 feet from it. I'm not gonna go back further. Again, we're talking durability. I want maximum impact forces. So there's no point in going back far take a shot. So here we go. 60 pounds, 29 inch draw, roughly under 100 grains total weight. Point blank at a steel drum head. Boom. Check that out. We're going to look at all these heads after I take all four of these shots. Okay? So there was the Black Hornet. Same bow this time. I'm going to use a Magnus Stinger 100 grain. Again, brand new package, just as you would buy them. Hopefully, you're supporting your local bow shop. But there's Cabela's, there's Bass Pro, you know, there's uh, right off the Magnus website. You know, however, you want to buy them, make sure you buy them in the packages with the line cards. So you know they're not counterfeit because we've ran into that issue before and we've done several videos on it. So again, gold tip, sub 400 grain arrow. Long blade angle. Many people say they're, we're gonna bend these and they, that's, you're gonna find out that that's just simply not true. And as you can see, I've not pulled the Black Hornet arrow. Sixty pounds, twenty-nine inch draw. Bang. So now let's try it on the Barnett Jackal crossbow. Again, a 100 grain Black Hornet straight out of the package. Always be careful when you're handling these things. They're surgical sharp. Nitro, gold tip nitro 500 bolt. Again, nothing fancy. This is all right off the shelf stuff that anyone can buy. Blew through it, knocked it down. Let's go put it back up, reattach it, and we'll do a stinger. Got it anchored to these cinder blocks because I did not know how it would hold up. I've never done this test, honestly. Never have done this before. All right, again, a Magnus Stinger, 100 grain. Long, efficient blade angle on these. Okay, here we go. Stinger, 100 grain. Boom. Something went whizzing past my head. I don't know what that was. 
All right, let's check them out. All right, so I'm gonna get down here so you can see. Um, the thing that went whizzing past my head on that last shot out of the crossbow was the Magnus Stinger with the insert. The insert actually came out of the crossbow bolt. And this was, I mean, it's probably been shot a handful of times, I would think. I don't remember last time my daughter shot this. So that was an adhesive failure between the insert and the bolt. Broadhead's in good shape though. But I've not touched anything outside of when I reset this uh, after the first crossbow shot. Uh, so everything you see right here is, you know, as I found it. And I'll give you some close-ups. I'm gonna remove uh, these blocks so we can talk about this. All right, so here's the broadheads uh, that I pulled out of that steel drum. These two here were shot out of the compound bow, uh, the Stinger, the Black Hornet. These two here were shot out of the crossbow, uh, the Black Hornet and the Stinger. And again, the Stinger um, on the crossbow, we had a failure uh, from the adhesive on the insert into the bolt. Uh, but if I take that off, you can see now here's the entire broadhead. So let's look at these one at a time. First of all, the very first shot was with the bow on the Black Hornet. Now there was a failure. You can see I actually drove the insert up into the arrow. So this arrow's trashed. That's fine. No big deal. It's worth the experiment. But the broadhead itself is actually completely intact. There is a slight curl right there at the tip and the edges of the blade are rolled over. When I look down this thing, it's straight. When I look at the bleeders, they're straight. When I look from behind, they're straight. When I look at the ferrule, there are no fractures in the ferrule anywhere in that broadhead. That is an aluminum 75-75 T6 ferrule right there. When I look at the Stinger shot out of the same bow on the identical arrow, uh, again, in this one, there is no tip curl whatsoever. The blade is not bent whatsoever. Yes, the edges are dull, but actually they look really nice. Like you could throw this on a stone and in five minutes have this thing shaving sharp again. Uh, the bleeders are not twisted. They're, this one's got maybe one ding in it up there. Uh, that's it. There's some scuff marks on the back where I had to take uh, some needle nose pliers and kind of pry in the vent to pull it back out of the drum lid. But absolutely impeccable condition for what it just went through. When I look at the ones on the crossbow, the Black Hornet, again, this one's got the tip is curled over. Um, a little more than it was on the compound, but it's also heavier and shooting a heck of a lot faster. Uh, when you look at the edge, this edge is rolled over, that edge a little bit, it is dull. But again, as I look at it, there's no bends in the blade, outside that tip curl right there a little bit. There's no bends in the bleeders. The aluminum ferrule is completely straight and true, and there's no cracks whatsoever in that. It held up phenomenally, phenomenally. On the Stinger, again, this is the crossbow shot. As I look down it, there's no tip curl whatsoever. It is straight looking at it visually. Will it spin true? I don't know, but visually it is straight. All of them are. The bleeders are straight. No waviness at all to them. This one's got a couple little dings in it right there. Looking at the ferrule, Everything is straight. There's not a fracture. There's not a crack. There's no bending anything in that aluminum ferrule. All right, so here we are a few hours later. I had to refilm this outro because when I was filming the first one, delivery truck came. Then I had multiple emails and phone calls for work come in. Life just interrupted me. And now the mosquitoes are swarming around me, so I apologize. But we'll make this relatively quick. So again, you saw four broadheads. These are all Magnus uh, broadheads, the Black Hornet and the Stinger. Uh, these are the actual heads I shot out of my compound bow and my crossbow and shot them into 
this steel drum lid here, which again, this is a steel drum lid. This was totally virgin, industrial duty steel, four holes. Uh, not great, I got some more of that black epoxy on my fingers. Anyway, so that was it, you saw it. I mean, so why do this test real quick? Well, um, to me, I've never, literally have never done this before because I always thought that the steel drum test that people do, I really have never figured it, it really pertained in the whitetail world or the elk hunting world or whatever. Uh, however, people rely on it. They, they seem to think it's a big deal and that's fine. But what it definitely does do is it tells you the durability of a head when you're hitting solid steel like that and then you're going out in the field and you're hunting say a deer or an elk or a moose and you look at the shoulder, the scapula area, the heavier bone. So is this a predictor that it will always hold up under all conditions when you hit a heavy bone? No, but what this test does show you is it definitely holds up to solid steel. Uh, you know, every once in a while we'll get somebody that says my broadhead broke because it hit foam in my foam target or whatever. Your broadhead's not breaking when you're hitting a foam target. Uh, maybe it's breaking because it hits a chunk of rebar that's in your 3D target or whatever, um, but it's not breaking because you hit foam. Right here, this was straight up cold, no practice, four shots into a virgin steel uh, drum lid. So you saw it. So that being said, without rambling too much further, pick up your Magnus broadheads, support your locally archer, local archery shops uh, if you have that option, and if they carry our heads, if they don't, ask them to. Uh, if not, you can get them at magnusbroadheads.com. You can get them at all your big box hunting stores, such as the Cabela's, Bass Pros, Shields, Sportsman's, all those places. Those are great uh, companies to support as well. So make sure you pick them up. Pick them up in the authentic packages. Be careful when you're buying on eBay and Amazon because we've done videos on the counterfeit heads that come from China and they're never in our packaging with our line cards. So be careful, don't buy the counterfeit stuff. Everything we make is made right here in the USA with USA Labor and a lifetime guarantee. Speaking of lifetime guarantee, if you're dumb and want to do this test like I just did and destroy broadheads or curl the tips or whatever, our lifetime warranty even covers that. All you gotta do is take a picture of it, email your information to Magnet, customer service at magnusbroadheads.com, include your info, including your address, your, your phone number, your email, a photo of the, the head, and we'll send you a new one for free. Again, we, we know what you did. You shot it into a steel drum. We'll still warranty it. That's just the way we roll, okay? So with that, Deer seasons, thankfully, are right around the corner. It is September the 1st here in Indiana. And so that means we're all going to be hunting soon. Stay safe. God bless. And as always, Magnus Broadheads. Get your Made in the USA cut on contact heads.